Hi there, it's Leonardo with another tutorial. And this time I want to teach you about my process to create realistic shading in Clip Studio Paint. So, I will start with this drawing. I didn't need to finalize my line art, but anyway. The first step I want to share is the use of flats. This is one of the strong points of Clip Studio Paint because you can select your flats from any ledger. So it's not necessary to be in the flat layer to select your flats. You can do this using the select color in the auto select tool and the reference ledger button. This way you can select the area you're looking for quite easily. This will work every time, no matter which ledger you are in. So let's create the flats. For starters, it's better if your drawing is in a vector ledge, and you will see why later. The little lighthouse over the ledger needs to be pressed. This button is called Reference Ledger. After doing this, I create a bitmap ledger for the flats. In the Field tool, select the one name refer other layers. Verifying the tool properties that the reference layer is checked and use the option close gap to avoid the overfill that sometimes happens in an open drawing. It is very important to uncheck the anti-aliasing because it creates semi-transparent colors and these colors are impossible to select. Remember to check the fill up vector path and the include vector path to create a fill under the line drawings. Now. I select a random color to fill the face. Because the close cap option is selected, some parts are not filled completely. So I zoom in to check for unfilled spots, like here in the eyelashes and the lower eyelid. You can see that it fills over the lines, except in small spots, like the ones in the eyelashes. I correct this manually. You can use the lasso tool and fill it. or use the tool called Lasso Fill that does the selection, fill and unselect in one step. For the body, I choose a different color of the one on the face because sometimes you want to create a hard border between the face and the neck. After all, sometimes the shadow of the neck is quite strong and you want to be able to cut the colors. I didn't use any natural color, just random ones. The important thing is that they are different enough to separate areas. I use a red color for the hair and I am checking for unfilled spots. So for the eyes, I'll use this purple color for the pupils and a blue one for the eyeballs. It's better to zoom in because sometimes it's hard to spot the parts that are not filled properly. So let's try the flats we just created. To do that, I change these reference layers on checking the line art and selecting the flats. I create a new layer and I pick the auto select tool and the one name select color. It's important to verify that the reference layer is checked. Now you can select any area quite easy. It's really good that it will select the flat area no matter that the colors are not joined. So you can see how powerful this method is. So let's start with the actual drawing. First, I decide the shadow areas for my painting. So, I place a light source to decide where to create the shadows. At the end, this is a simplified version of the final painting. I create this base skin color by selecting the face on the body from the flats. This is my second tip the use of clip to layer below. When I uncheck this option, 
you can see how the colors can be spilled outside of the area we are painting. That means that if you create a folder with layers inside, this layer will be masked by the layer under the folder. In this case, my skin color. By checking this button, you can mask all the layers you need with a simple click. That's super cool. Now let's see how I create the different shading for the skin in this painting. The color used for the first shadow layer is based in the basic skin color. I just shift this color to red and then I darken it a little bit to create a natural looking shadow. On the skin, I only use two different tools. This brush, you can find it under the watercolor brushes and the name is Painting Brush Mix. The brushes and tools I use for this painting are shown in the top right corner. The painting process is fast forward 10 times to show how the shading is built up layer by layer. But you can see that there are different intensities of shadows, some hard, some soft, in different spots of the skin. The fold in the skin of the eyelid are built up from a dark line faded to the outside. The deepest parts in the face are normally dark because these are the parts that are not directly illuminated and these shadows will create the illusion of volume. The neck is normally in shadows, depending on the position of the light source. The nice thing about this brush is that if you press softly, it will blend nicely the colors. Now you can see the use of the blending tool. You can adjust the intensity of the blending tool and it will soften the strokes without erasing it completely. Now in a multiply layer, I am trying to build up the shadows. I could do this in a single layer, but if I screw up this step, I can start again, try to fix it and I'm not going to lose all my previous work. The blending tool is quite amazing because you can drag transparent color to your color or you can blend your color to the transparent parts. This is another layer I create. I know it looks weird, but it helps the skin to have a variation in color. This way the skin doesn't look like a mannequin with a uniform skin color. This will help you to achieve a realistic look. I set this layer to screen and about 25% opacity. It is subtle, but easy to see the different coloration of the skin after this layer is applied. I create another layer with reddish color to blush the nose and the cheeks. This will help to sell the illusion of a crying person. I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer. This way the liner will be softened. Finally, the layer with the lighting. I use a quite light color to start building this step to complete the illusion of 3D. This layer will help to separate the volumes that form the face and the body of the character. In the face, the nose, cheeks, forehead and chin are the ones that receive more light. In the body, the shoulders, arms and over the breast are more illuminated. I create the eyes in a single layer. 
the eyeballs are painted gray and using a soft brush I spray over a lighted gray to create the spherical shape. Another tip is to never paint the white part of the eye in white. This looks artificial and doesn't convey the real shape of the eyeball. After this, I am using the G pen to create the eyelashes. This tool is really great for this step. Then I paint the lower part of the eye. I really don't know the name of this part, but I painted using a pink color. This part helps to separate the eyeballs from the skin and place it behind the skin. Now the iris is painted using brown. I border the eye and in the bright part I use a yellowish color. It's important to create a shadow over the iris because the shape of the iris is conical. In the end I didn't like the color of the eyes. So I apply a hue saturation tonal correction to decrease the saturation and change the color to brown one. When I finish the eyes, I start with the lips. The base color of the lips was pink. And I use the same process that for the rest of the painting. But my only regret is that I did everything in a single layer, again. And I think this is a mistake because it's hard to fix any problem without messing up everything. But this was a mistake. But it's not a mistake, so I need to accept it. For the hair, I use a special brush. I download this tool from the Clip Studio Assets for free. It was uploaded for T. Zainley. I don't know if I destroyed this name, sorry about it. For the creation of the hair, I used different layers that build up the texture. My first step was to create the dark spot of the hair. I tried to paint using the same direction of the actual hair. Then I built up different tones from dark to bright and I finalized with the shiny part of the head. When I finished I didn't like the final color so I did the same thing I did with the eyes and changed the hue saturation afterwards to change the color of the hair for a color I kind of like. To finalize the hair I use the G pen to create a layer over the hair folder. In this layer I paint individual hairs that help to break the lines created by the hair mask and make the final painting look a little bit more realistic. I changed the expression of the eyebrows because it didn't convey the sadness I want for the character. In another layer I paint some makeup for the eyes to create a more dramatic effect. I create the white spot of the eyes in a separate layer and I put more blushing in another layer. I think this helped a lot to create this reddish color that's 
some white people get when they cry. I separate to the teardrop because uh, I want to try different effects for this part and I fade a lot this layer until I get satisfied with the result. And finally, I place a layer correction over the entire painting and I adjust the contrast to make the colors pop a little bit more. And this is the final result. I hope you like it and learn something new. Thank you for watching.